Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. A millionaire gay couple have said that they intend to go to court to force churches to host gay weddings. Barry Drew Barlow and his civil partner Tony have told the Essex Chronicle that they intend to take legal action because as much as people are saying the new same-sex marriage law is a good thing, I am still not getting what I want. The new marriage legislation includes measures to protect churches from being forced to perform same-sex weddings. But Mr Drew Barlow said, The only way forward for us now is to make a challenge in the courts against the church. It is a shame that we are forced to take Christians into a court to get them to recognise us. The couple shot to fame in 1999 when they became the first British gay couple to be named on their children's birth certificates. They entered a civil partnership in 2006 and have reportedly donated around half a million pounds to groups lobbying for same-sex marriage. Meanwhile, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, has said it would be foolish to ignore the revolution caused by same-sex marriage coming into law. He made the comments while speaking to more than 6,000 people at a Christian conference. Justin Welby, who voted against gay marriage in the House of Lords, said he heard what he described as a roar of revolution during debate in Parliament. However, he added that popular opinion is not a case for changing obedience to God. He insisted the church is not changing its beliefs about sexual ethics, but said more should be done to tackle homophobic behaviour. The Court of Appeal has rejected attempts to weaken the law on euthanasia. Three judges unanimously upheld a ruling that the late Tony Nicholson, who had locked-in syndrome, did not have the right to be helped to die. They also dismissed the case of paralysed man Paul Lamb, who also appealed to have the right to be euthanised by a doctor. Care Not Killing, a campaign group against legalising assisted suicide and euthanasia, welcomed the court's rejection of the Nicholson and Lamb cases. Dr Andrew Ferguson from the group said, The judgment comprehensively and completely dismissed these appeals, which sought to alter legislation covering murder. But a third man with locked-in syndrome, known only as Martin, won his case to seek further clarification of the Director for Public Prosecution's guidelines on assisted suicide involving health professionals. One of the largest cities in the US is considering a law which could ban anyone who disagrees with gay marriage from working for the city government. San Antonio City Council in Texas is amending its anti-discrimination rules with the new wording, saying that no person shall be appointed to a position if that person has ever shown a bias by word or deed against a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. Councillor Diego Bernal said the city code needed updating and the new wording was the bare minimum, but local Christians are concerned by the broad wording saying it could lead to an employment ban against anyone who holds traditional views about marriage. Steve Branson, a Baptist pastor in San Antonio, says it's stifling free speech. If you voice any opinion at any time, no matter how many years back it's been, it can be used against you and city employees are going to be greatly affected by this. A religious view, you either have one or don't, but it's still a religious view. And if I don't attain to their view, then I'm out of the picture completely. It's a stifling of free speech. And organisation Faith Outreach has also criticised the proposals. The group said it allows City Council to prohibit those that speak their religious beliefs regarding homosexuality from serving on city boards. This violates First Amendment freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And finally, a free Bible smartphone app has passed more than 1 million downloads. The app, published by LifeChurch.tv, is available worldwide in hundreds of languages and translations, including the King James, New International and English Standard versions. You can also download audio versions too and access bookmarks, notes and reading plans. The publishers say they want to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. We consistently strive to demonstrate and teach people how God's word relates to everyone, no matter where they are in life. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.